Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today's video is going to be a three month update on these little nuggets right here. They are three months old. I can hardly believe it. Today I'm gonna to share with you guys sleep habits, eating habits, personalities, some health updates, all kinds of fun stuff. I've also got two tips for you guys to help you, especially if you are having twins. And then I've got a few products to share with you guys at the end. So stay tuned if you wanna see how these ladies are getting by at three months old. All right, you guys, don't leave me. I know you wish the babies were here the entire time of the video. My arms cannot handle that. Blech, I would be too tired but I'm gonna insert lots of footage of them as I talk about everything that they're doing. So let's jump into eating. As you guys know, breastfeeding has been a challenge for me with both of them. They, um, I've just had a really hard time making enough milk for both of them. And so we started supplementing a few weeks ago and it's gone so well, it really has. They're doing really well on the formula. They um, are still getting breast milk. I'm still nursing them. I was pumping and feeding them breast milk that way and then not nursing and now I've gone back to mostly nursing and not um, pumping. So I, I'm a little wishy-washy there and I know I need to make up my mind because the ladies need to understand what's going on. So I know I need to kind of settle into what I'm gonna do there, but right now we are still doing a combination of formula and breast milk. As far as sleep goes, this adding in formula because they weren't getting enough to eat. So they weren't sleeping well at all because they were hungry all the time. Now that they're getting enough to eat, they're doing so much better with sleeping, so much better. Um, they are sleeping anywhere from three to six hours. Um, Amelia has even gone as long as I believe eight hours sleeping. So <laughs> it's been revolutionary, revolutionary for my eye bags, for my weight loss. I know that sounds crazy, but if you're not sleeping, your body's not having time to do the things it needs to do. So losing weight has slowly started picking back up for me a little bit, which has been awesome. I don't usually plan on talking about myself much in these updates, but I just thought I would throw that in. So sleeping is just, you know, we don't have a strict schedule yet. We have a routine. Um, and that's kind of how I've always been. So it's not like blocked out hours, you sleep this time, whatever. We just have a routine. Um, and let me know if you guys would like to see that. I can do an evening routine. You guys seem to really like my mommy morning routine video. I will link that above if you wanna go check it out if you haven't seen it already. Um, and if you wanna see an evening routine, let me know down below in the comments and I will definitely try to do that for you guys and show you a little bit more of how we get the babies ready for bed because we really have helped to um, signal to them that it is bedtime, it's time to go to sleep, and we don't have a lot of trouble with that right now. So that's going better than um, I expected it to be going at three months old. As far as their sizes go, I weighed them both yesterday, and I really, really thought that Amelia was gonna tip over into the 10 pound mark, but she was nine pounds, 14 and a half ounces. So today, if I weighed her, she would have probably been 10 pounds. So we're just gonna call Millie Girl 10 pounds. And Ivy was nine pounds, six and a half or seven ounces. So she's about half a pound smaller than her sister. It's funny because Amelia does feel a lot bigger than her, but her, her build is just so different. Um, she is very like, I don't know, she's a lot more like compact and her weight is you know, kind of distributed differently on her body than Ivy's is. Ivy um, has really long limbs. Her body itself feels very long and skinny. She carries some weight in her head. Girl got a big brain. We're not hating on that. So yeah, they just carry their weight differently, much like the rest of us do. If you look at them it, or, or were to hold them, it feels like more than half a pound, but it's not, it's just half a pound. As far as their personalities go, they are very different babies, very different babies. Um, Ivy is baby, was baby A, and I have come to learn from talking to other twin moms that baby A's are very dominant. They tend to be the fussier babies for most people. Um, it's just that dominant personality, and apparently that's what got them to the A spot to begin with. So that's definitely Ivy. She is very headstrong. She knows what she wants, and by golly, she wants it right now. Like right now. If she thinks it, you better be acting on it. I remember with my first baby being so like frantic when they would cry. And while I don't like for them to cry at all, 
if I could have it my way, they would never cry. I'm a little better at like, okay, okay, I'm working. I'm not gonna let this panic me to the point that I mess up or rush or do something wrong or accidentally drop you because I'm running up and down the stairs. You know, I try to keep my cool. So um, I got her number, you know, I'm not letting her get to me. But yeah, so that's Ivy's personality right now is just very feisty, but she has really started to add in this like very sweet factor to her personality where she wakes up in the morning and she just smiles and I mean she just looks at you like she is so in love with you like you are just the best thing and that's one of the best things about being a mom is that those kids look at you like you hung the moon and there's no one else on earth who will ever look at you or love you as much as those babies do. Um, so yeah, she's just, she, she can be so, so sweet. Like I never want to make her sound like, oh, she's a bad baby or any of that. And there's no such thing as a bad baby. She's a little more high needs. Sure. But she's not a bad baby. No baby is a bad baby. Speaking of personalities and Ivy's being one way, Amelia is the complete opposite right now at three months old. She is by far the easiest baby we have ever had. The easiest child we have ever had. And I realize she's only been on the earth for three months, but the child is we laugh, we're like, if this was our only kid, or even if this was our only baby right now, like we would just be sailing. It would just be smooth waters because that baby just sleeps, eats, she puts herself to sleep. She doesn't even, it's a, she'll let you hold her and rock her to sleep, but if you can't, she's all right with that. Just lay her down and she'll go to sleep. You give her her passy and she's like, goodbye George, see you next Thursday. Appreciate that a lot and I feel like I feel like I wish there was like a reward system that I could be like, you have been amazing all week. I'm going to buy you a pony because she really deserves it. She's just um, such an easy baby. And again, super happy so when she's awake. You know, she's very happy, very smiling, and she is finding her voice. Um, they both are. Ivy's starting to talk. And by talk, I mean like, oh, ah, ah, ah. but um, Ivy's a little more quiet, a little more meek about it, you know, but Amelia will just lay on the ground and like, ah, <laughs> just like holler <laughs> where you're like, is she prepping to cry? She's not prepping to cry. She's just yelling. She's just like talking to you. If you follow me on Instagram. You've seen in my Insta stories. When I lay them next to each other, Ivy will just like, kind of look over like, oh, hey, and then she'll look back at me and whatever. Amelia just stares at her and then she takes her little arm and she's like, <clears throat> she's trying to figure out any way that she can just to touch her or she'll take her leg and make sure that she can throw her leg over Ivy and just like leave her leg on her like, I got you, I'm holding you down. And then she takes her little arm and messes with her. So it's very, you know, she's still learning to like how to use her arms. So it's very like all over the place. So sometimes that means she just gets punched right in the cheek but it's hilarious when you put them together. Health-wise, um, they are both doing great. They are both healthy. They do each have their own little little things going on. Um, as you guys know, if you watched our most recent vlog, we went to see a surgeon because we were told at our last doctor's appointment that Amelia could potentially need surgery. She, They both have hernias. Ivy's is an umbilical hernia, so while it looks kind of crazy because her belly button sticks out like this far, um, those kind tend to heal on their own by the time the child is about five years old. And that's been the case for us um, in the past. Jonah had a hernia when he came to us and his healed by the time he was about three and a half to four, his went away. Kid's got a six pack. Actually, I think you might have an eight pack. So he's good to go. Amelia, on the other hand, hers is up in between her abs. It's like basically like diastasis recti, which is like what pregnant women get when your ab muscles separate. And at this point and the way it looks and everything, not, not likely if possible at all for it to just heal on its own. She will require surgery for that. However, the, the upside of that is that the doctor feels like at her age and with it not causing her any issues right now or anything, he can put that surgery off until she's about two or three. So that kind of wraps up how the girls are doing now. I do want to give you guys two tips because I think that these things have been invaluable for us, things that we have learned now. These are things that have really helped us being parents of twins. Now you can definitely apply these to your singleton babies as well, but I think these tips are especially helpful for people who are gonna have twins or if you have twins currently. When we were learning about sleep for our twins, a lot, all the books and everything tell you, sleep and eat at the same time. If one baby wakes, you wake the other baby. And while that advice is very good and solid, there's one exception to that in my opinion, and this is what we have found 
is nighttime. Once they reach a certain point where they are sleeping longer stretches, we found that Amelia will sleep way longer than Ivy. So rather than wake them both up, when Amelia doesn't want to or need to wake up at that point, we just let her sleep. So what we do, how we, how we structure it is we alternate. CR takes Ivy one night, I take Amelia. So we go to bed, they go to bed. Ivy, Amelia will usually sleep a good six hours. So I don't, we don't touch her, she doesn't wake up, I sleep. Ivy will usually wake up after three or so hours. CR will wake up, give her a bottle, and, they, and then he goes back to sleep, she goes back to sleep. And then usually it's the second feed that happens at like five or six o'clock in the morning, they both wake up for. So Amelia is sleeping longer stretches than Ivy. So I am just not about to, if, if she's training herself to sleep through the night and sleep longer, I'm not gonna stop that. So I let her sleep. Now, if it was a situation where they were just constantly waking up back and forth hour to hour to hour to hour all night, sure, don't do that. But if one baby is showing signs of being ready to sleep longer, let them sleep longer. You may have one baby that sleeps through the night a lot sooner. They're twins, but they're not the same person. They were just born at the same time. So they're gonna develop differently and have different sleep patterns and things like that. And I am not about to make my life harder. If one baby wants to start sleeping through the night, rock on, sister. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is with twins, get yourself a good, good carrier. If you've been following me on Instagram, you have seen lately my use of the twin carrier. Yes, it's heavy. Yes, it kind of hurts your back a little bit from time to time. It's nothing catastrophic, but it makes it so much easier. The structured twin carrier that I use is the Wego twin carrier. It is much like other baby carriers. It, tie, it buckles around your waist, goes over your shoulder, and the babies each have pockets that they go into here and it zips and covers them. I mean, it's a whole thing, but it doesn't take me long to get them both in it and it's really, really easy to put on. No thought or anything has to go into it. You just put it on and put the babies in it and you're good to go. The other carrier I use is, this is the Solly Wrap. And if you, again, follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I wrapped the babies. I have two of these. Um, I wrapped them in one when we went to the pumpkin patch because I left that carrier at home and I double wrapped them. So it is possible. I usually stick to the double wrap when I'm at home with them. I've had a lot of requests for me to show people how I use this carrier for twins, how I actually wrap it. So I am going to do that video for you guys and I'm going to do, a, I'm going to put it in a blog post. Let's jump super quick into products. I don't want this to take a long time, but I want to share with you guys some products that um, have really been awesome for us this month in the girls' third month of life. And the first thing is a sound machine. This is just a home edit sound machine. It does ocean, brook, summer night, rain, white noise. We usually do the rain one because the girls are still in our room. I don't want to listen to white noise. That's not fun for me. I like the rain. So I like the like thunder. There's also a thunder one. So thunder, rain, any of those. And Ivy loves the rain. That's the main reason we got this was to help try to extend the amount of time that she is sleeping. This has been clutch. Again, everything will be linked down in the description box if you want to check it out. The other thing that we have been loving is this little car seat toy. This goes hooks around, wraps around the car seat. Uh, the girls are at the age now where looking at themselves is like, they just are like, hey you, how you doing? Good looking, like they love to look at themselves. Very narcissistic little babies. So um, this has been awesome. A lot of times, like we ate in a restaurant the other day, I will take it down off the bar and kind of lay it in their laps so that they can just touch it and crinkle it. That's been really helpful, so I like that. I, I, I'm gonna sing the praises of this um, swaddle once again. We have just fallen in love with these love to dream swaddles and I cannot say enough good things about them. This is a crucial part of the baby's night routine. We notice immediately if they are fussy and we will, you can tell, we always joke like, okay, they're ready to get in their suits. We, we call it their suits, like it's time to suit up. And so that's what we do every night. That is a huge part of their night routine is getting into these suits at night to go to sleep. They know these suits mean it's we're sleeping for the long haul now. Like this is the big times, so we're going to bed. Also, I've talked before about how Miss Ivy is very fussy in the car. So I bought one of these things called a sound bub. And this is, I think, the bunny. And it just hangs on the car seat and charge it with a USB cable. And it hangs over the car seat and creates a nice white noise, which Ivy needs in the car. It gets nice and loud. I hope that you can hear that. 
it gets nice and loud. That is very helpful for her. This thing has a whole slew of other features that it, it does. I haven't really used any of those voice recordings, things like that. So like you can record something of you like talking to your baby, I think. It does a whole lot of other stuff. The only thing I've used it for is white noise. So definitely check that out if you're in need. It, so I just don't want you to look at the price of it and be like, that's expensive for white noise. It does a whole bunch of other stuff. I think you can play your music through it. For right now, I'm just using it for white noise. I will dive into the other features with all my spare time. I would like to just share this Mama Jamma pillow with you guys. The last time you probably saw this pillow was in my baby gear haul when I shared it. This is the Twinsy pillow. This is a breastfeeding pillow for twins. I, however, got very little use out of it for that purpose. Now, now I really love it. It's awesome for laying the babies in each of their little, they each have like a little spot and I can lay them in there and they're both propped up so I can give them both bottles at the same time and look at them and engage with them, look into their eyes at both of them at the same time. It's great. Um, it's also really great for tummy time. We put them in it and put their little legs down through the holes and their bellies prop up on the top part of it and they get their neck exercise and, and good tummy time. So it's been an awesome pillow for us. For the twins, I definitely would recommend it if you're expecting twins. If you even if you don't love it for the purposes of breastfeeding, you will you will love it for all the other reasons you can use it after that. I hope you guys enjoyed this update on Ivy and Amelia and how they are doing at three months old. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it and you want to see lots and lots more of the twins. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.